So we have a couple of options with, with our snowmobile trips. The, we do either half day, full day, or overnight trips here in Iqaluit. And a half day trip is, uh, it's always catered to the skill level of the rider. So if we have experienced riders such as having snowmobile TV here, we can always go further, farther, faster. Just means you see more. But in general, our trips are out over the sea ice here on Frobisher Bay. So you get a little bit of rough ice uh, just getting out onto the, the open ocean. It's a weird sensation in itself. It's very much the wilderness. Uh, we have no gas stations once we leave town. There's no cell service outside of town. Everything we do is on sat phone. We bring all our fuel with us. It's basically expeditions for, even if you're out for a half day, you prepare that you could get stuck. You bring all your uh, maintenance with you. You've got tools, spare parts. You've got everything with you. We pull comatics or traditional Inuit uh, sleds that are uh, behind the snowmobiles so that we can uh, carry all of our equipment with us so we're self-sufficient as soon as we step out of town that if we got stuck for a couple of days we'd be able to stay safe. The riding conditions are, are sort of as, as it was described to me today as raw snowmobiling. There's no trails, there's no routes, it's, it's really led by the conditions so we're really following what the land allows us to, to do and achieve in the places we can go for that day. Uh, so we, we, the experience is unique. Every trip is very different because we can only do what, what the conditions will allow and what the, the riders are, are up for. It's a physical experience that, uh, that you're, you're, you're undertaking on the machine. You're having to absorb a lot of impact. Not that it's heavy impact or things that will throw you off the machine. It's, it's fairly flat. It's just more that the machine is bouncing around and uh, things like that. So you're a little bit of throttle control, a little bit of balance. Uh, but really having to, to handle the machine throughout the day. So you, you come back from a full day of riding and uh, as you said yourself, Phil, is it spa day tomorrow? <laughs> I hope you come back for me. Guys, hello. You can be complete full service. You could, we have a sort of saying that you can go from the beach to the Arctic in a day and we'll make sure you're safe. So if you want to show up in shorts and flip-flops, we'll make sure that you've got enough clothing to be warm that we can rent out. But in terms of the trip itself, we provide all the safety equipment, guides, snacks, hot meals, uh, drinks, whatever it is while you're out. It's really a full service opportunity that you can walk off the plane. If you want to bring your own snowmobile gear, whether it's helmets or uh, coats or pants or boots, as long as they're warm enough for the weather that we're having at that time, then let's just go with it. We've got our machines here. and with our local guides that we work with that make sure that we're safe and we pick the right routes and uh, yeah we just have a lot of fun while we're out there. What do you think when you when you meet people for the first time? Um, I, I try and ask uh, or find out where they're from first and uh, kind of ask questions about like the experience to writing uh, or the little experience uh, so it depends on the experience of the um, client or the person that's visiting and uh, that it could be a similar thing or a very different thing up here uh, if you're not used to riding in the tundra here. We are not a flat terrain at all. Uh, there's nothing groomed. Uh, that's where the local knowledge is so critical. Uh, you have to know where you're going. You have to know what to look for on the land as well as on the more, more specifically on the ice. It, the ice is what's the most dangerous part because you have to be able to read what you're facing. You can get snow covered water, you can get thin ice, you can, there's areas of uh, high currents that create illusions of safe ice where it's really not at all. And then over land, there, there's no mapped routes. It's not like you can go into uh, the Snowmobile Association here and pick up a nice, you know, beautiful map and just follow the trail with your GPS. You really have to know where you're going. So that's where the guides are, are our lifeline up here. Watching you guiding us out there on the uh, out on the ice, I noticed you use old technology. I've seen you moving rocks around and, and going by what are very traditional markings. More of a self-learning thing. Um, over the years, the rocks are used, uh, have been used for guiding uh, and knowing your trail. Uh, it can tell you there's a dangerous uh, area here, or fishing area, or general just a marker uh, to. Uh, take you home safely. But that's been something that's been in your family for a few hundred years. Yes, yeah, including the weather, the sun, um, the snow banks, uh, how if you had prevailing winds north and south in the last few days, you can also navigate with that too.
Again, the weather's the boss, and uh, you always have to keep in mind where the wind's coming from. Like today, it's kind of a northwest wind, and you have to keep that in mind. If you're going with the wind on the way out, uh, it should be into the wind as you're coming into town. Like you keep those in the back of your head uh, as, uh, as the day goes. Uh, again, it comes with uh, experience. Uh, I still, I'm still learning myself, but you got to keep uh, in, in mind that it's tides, you got water, um, you got uh, winds, uh, you got to stay dry. Um, you can't get too cold too fast or to the point you can't use your hands anymore. So you got to keep those in mind. At the same time, we have 35 foot tides up here that could move water every six hours pretty good so you're always thinking about the next when is a high tide when is a low tide and uh, um, yeah just uh, even new snow could be dangerous uh, powder snow under there is rocks that you can hit and <laughs> damage yourself or the machine so every little thing you've got to keep in mind uh, when you're driving up there it's not where you can take off for an hour and expect to be back uh, if you don't know the area, you could get into a lot of trouble or it could be fatal. And, uh, um, so, if you don't have the experience, go with somebody with experience. And then pack, if you're going to go for a day, pack for three days, that kind of mentality. We have machines that are tried and tested in this environment. Uh, there's always bells and whistles that exist on all kinds of new machines, but up here we have very limited ability to service equipment and we need to know that the product will stand up to the conditions. So we use Skidoo Expedition 600 Aces. Uh, the reason for that is they're fuel efficient, they're lightweight, they can still haul a lot of equipment, uh, easy to handle. Uh, and they're, they're built for the, for the ruggedness of our terrain. Uh, we need something that will, will handle being bounced around and uh, rocky and ice and things like that. So we really want to make sure that we've got a machine that we're going to, if we go out for a weekend, we can trust that it's going to come back in one piece. Uh, they're all, you know, we bring up new machines almost every year. So we've, we've got modern technology in there with the heated hand grips. We've got two up seating. So if, uh, if there's couples or families that want to come up and you've got one person who's an experienced driver and someone who's never been on a snowmobile but wants to still enjoy it, that we've got a way to accommodate them. Uh, to make sure that everybody can, can be comfortable on the machine. So it, uh, it really is a nice, comfortable ride. Well, there's, there's worse ways to be out on the land, let's say. Uh, last couple of days I've been using the Z1 uh, Arctic Cat. Uh, I just got it about a week ago. Uh, it rides nice so far, lots of power. And the uh, sled, or Hamutik, uh, uh, spelled uh, Q-A-M-U-T-I-K, Hamutik. Uh, it's a sled uh, made out of uh, lumber, but it's all tied up, uh, no screws, except for the Teflon, of course, and some metal uh, are bolted down or are screwed down. Uh, but the runners themselves are all tied up uh, with rope. Uh, so uh, very hard to break it. Uh, if, you have, if you, like anything else, you overload it, they will break down, or you need some yearly or uh, maintenance, uh, new rope of course, uh, works its way with the land in uh, certain angles and um, the design is uh, made for this type of terrain. It's not too long because it's, uh, as you know, the pressure ice and the rocks you've got to go around sometimes. It's got to be a certain length, it can't be too long or you'll be catching every rock when you turn and, or uh, ice when you turn uh, in and out of the ice. The traditional hamotic. Even frozen fish were used as sleds, wrapped in seal, uh, whale bones, uh, timber, um, driftwood, uh, uh, especially the bowhead whale. They have very big bones and stuff like that you can use for different things. We're sitting at 63 degrees north, which is about 250, 300 kilometers uh, south of the Arctic Circle. So we're really the last stop. We're the major major airport, so it's the capital of the territory. We're well serviced with flights from Ottawa, so it's a three-hour direct flight. Uh, 
by jet into a into a city. We've got everything you could need here: hotels, restaurants, bars, entertainment. It's all here. We've got gyms. It, it really is a, a small city. It's got everything unto itself that uh, you could ever ask for in a, in a vacation spot. I think my favorite reactions are when people realize that this place is so different than what they expect. You really have to take the Arctic at its own terms. If you bring your, your if you force something on the Arctic, the Arctic wins every time. So it's really about that understanding of slowing down, being patient, and then just embracing the environment around you. When you get those moments of coming around that corner and that view opens up and you just see someone's face light up, it's incredible. For a lot of the people that come here, it's a brand new experience. So I get to see that through their eyes every day. And seeing that experience is what is what really excites me to go to work. It's that's what we do. We try to make an experience that you couldn't get anywhere else and, and allow people to enjoy it in their own way, whether it's through photography or film or uh, painting, whatever it might be, we want to make sure that, that people come up here and they can go home and they can tell people that this is the place that they saw something they've never experienced before. I think the main thing about the Arctic is that it's, it's more accessible than people think. We, we provide organized travel that makes this destination very accessible. Out of Ottawa, out of Montreal, you can come up for a weekend and through Arctic Kingdom we really, we really built some incredible partnerships with, with First Air, one of the airlines that services the north, as well as the hotels to really make a package that is competitive with any other destination for snowmobiling for what we can offer and what your budget can, can allow and that we also look at, we can do all kinds of custom things so just because you want to come up for two days but you really want to do a week's worth of riding, let us know. We can, we've done epic trips that are anywhere from, you know, five days to three weeks long that are all on snowmobiles, so the, the, the possibilities are really endless.